All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it, a view from Front Porch USA, my palatial estate along the mighty Ohio in this great community of Manaka. You know, I gotta tell you, even though I'm in my sixth decade, whenever I see snow, I think of flexible flyer, I think of sled riding with my crew, the original Pratt Pack, the original Brighton Boys, and how, yeah, with your dad's hunting gear on, you would sled ride well into the night, and then it was home to those windows that were steamed up because your mom had just placed the pot of sauce on the stove and the boiling water with the pasta next to it. And what a sight it was after being out all day into the night under the street lights. Yes, sled riding a winter day away in Western Pennsylvania. Also great memories going to church too in this great place that I call home in the former St. Joe Parish in New Brighton, now Holy Family, Father Tom Cradle. You know, we have a Beaver County resident for many years in Ambridge, who's now our beloved Bishop of the Catholic Diocese of Pittsburgh. And you know, you're Pratt Pack, big fan of Bishop Zubik and everything he has done. And I love the Pittsburgh Catholic and I just am proud to be a part of the diocese. Well, I'm very excited to tell you that have been listening to me for years on News Radio 1020 KDK that beginning this Sunday and every other Sunday at 6.30 in the morning, Pittsburgh time, the diocese will have a radio program, part of the weekend lineup. So, so excited about that. And thank you to all the people of the Catholic Diocese of Pittsburgh, including Bishop David Allen Zubik, the young man from Ambridge, because they are now going to be a part of our Sunday lineup. So looking forward to that. That's this Sunday and every other Sunday beginning at 6.30. Now, I uh, have in my hand, this was Commissioner Camp and Egley, as it is detailed in a great article by Tom Davidson. They had their breakfast talking about the economy of Beaver County. As I mentioned, Tony Amadeo, great guy, unable to attend, had some personal business. But Danny Camp, who of course, I grew up with that Camp family and I know them, and of course his late father, a big hero of mine, and his mother Cheryl and his sisters, and of course his beloved wife, and he's now a dad, so good people. And Sandy Egley has done an incredible job as well too. She is a great leader, I believe, in Beaver County. She and Danny are both part of the Republican Party, and she happens to be from that hometown that I'm from, New Brighton, Pennsylvania. So let me just kind of go through some of this, and as I said, line by line, paragraph by paragraph. So it's going to get a little lengthy, but it's worth it. Now, Harry Kunzelman remembers the best and worst of times of Beaver County. Now a lawyer with Straussberger, McKenna, Gutnick, and Gesky, Kunzelman's grandfather worked at, well, some places that are very significant in our county's history, like Conway Yards. At one time, the Norfolk Southern Yard was the largest push-button rail yard in the world, and also the former St. Joseph Leg Company, where my grandfather, my dad, my godfather, and many people worked for many years. Um, he talked about, you know, relatively economic prosperity back in the day, and yeah, I remember all of that. Then came the 80s, and yeah, we all remember the 80s. He was talking to the Beaver County Chamber under the direction of my good friend Jack Manning at their annual State of the County Breakfast, at the beautiful Fez in Hopewell Township. You know, and many of us know the story all too well. The slow death of the steel industry, Mr. Kunselman talked about. And now, ever since, you know, community leaders and obviously politicians and our great commissioners are trying for some sort of rebirth. And he believes, as I do, that this Shell petrochemical plant is the beginning. Now, folks, this is a $6 billion investment. Keystone Mount Lake Regional Council of Carpenters, Rick Okrzewski and I have talked many times about the 6,000 workers that are there, those great union jobs, and all of the jobs that will be there when this thing is up and running in years, and there will be all of the feeder stock, the other companies that will be here feeding off of that plant. So when you go back in history, this is my opinion, and if you're a historian of Beaver County, just work with me if you will, and I think you'll understand. When my grandfather came from Missouri, okay, to build St. Joe Lead, late 20s, early 30s, okay? My father was born in 26, they moved here five years after the fact to Rochester, Pennsylvania, right? Well, the steel industry was on its way and doing well, but nothing like it did in the 30s and in the 40s and the 50s. And because it was a smelter and it did acid, which was used in the process of many of the steel companies in the region, many of them began to pop up. And if you think about it, look, at you had Bethlehem Steel, you had American Bridge, Crucible, the great J&L Steel employed at one time 14,008 miles 
of that incredible stretch of property that my friend Chuck Betters continues to develop and a lot of jobs responsible because of that. So it is almost like it's a repeat performance of what happened when my grandfather came here many, many years ago. So a lot of work to be done, no doubt, right? Well, as part of this breakfast, Sandy Egley and Danny Camp talked about the cracker plant, the significance of it, and it was moderated by another good friend, John Del, uh, KDK TV2's money and political editor. He talked about how, well, Beaver County is looked at a little differently now. This is where the action is. I mean, there's a lot happening, and Mr. Delano is right about that. Now, Sandy Egley talked about a report card in which this is how she believes the county is doing. Now, she knows they're facing a number of issues. In this article from Tom Davidson that you can read in its entirety at timesonline.com, union contracts with county employees, appealing a court order reassessment of county property, and working to approve the county's financial outlook. Her goals include focusing on core services of the county government and making tough cuts to improve the county's finances. Some of those cuts she talked about, privatizing Brady's Run, the ice rink, and the pool at Old Economy Park. She also supports cuts in county government as well that are duplicated. And she talked about passports being offered at the Prothonotary's office, and that's something that can be done at the federal post office. Now, Danny Camp, when asked last year to give a word to describe Beaver County by John Delano, he used the word radar because we were on everyone's radar with this Shell petrochemical plant. This year, he wanted to use the word forward because he is thinking about the county moving forward. Now, both punted, according to Mr. Davidson, when they were asked their position on the planned location of Shell's pipeline company, Falcon Ethane Pipeline, which is opposed by the Ambridge Water Authority. I'm going to find out more about it, Camp said, in explaining why he lacks a stance on the issue. Ditto, said Egley. Both commissioners said they feel that county can win its appeal to the Commonwealth Court of Reassessment of County Property. Now, neither spoke against the Beaver County Partnership for Community and Economic Growth, an initiative that is the support of the chamber. Uh, there are concerns that the group aims to, well, do duplication of what other organizations in the county already do. This according to Egley and Camp. Now, Delano closed the evening by asking the commissioners what they would be saying at the 2019 breakfast. Mr. Delano, very smart, always planning ahead. I would like to say we, the county, would be financially stable, according to Commissioner Egley. She'd like to do that with no tax increase, cutting the county government to its core services by selling the ice arena and pool. Cam said he agrees to disagree with Egley on those matters. He said the county needs to offer such things as the ice rink at Brady's Run and other recreational opportunities to provide an attractive quality of life to its residents. Next year, Commissioner Kemp said he would like to be able to boast that the county is a place where people want to visit and live, that people want to move to Beaver County. Well, I'm glad I was born and raised in Beaver County, and yes, this is where they will bury me, and I'm sure I'll have a smile on my face because the ride, just like those many years sled riding, has been an incredible one. So remember, folks, for everything that's happening in the county, the best source, the Beaver Allegheny County Times. Stay warm, enjoy the rest of your day, and maybe make a few snowballs, and don't hurt anyone, but I don't know, just kind of relive your youth a little bit. It's good for you, just like the cold air, okay? Hey, thank you for joining me, and until tonight, good afternoon from your Pratt Pack.